The Canadian Medical Association, in response to all the criticisms about um, waiting lists, have created a short video in order to address these concer concerns. They say it should be ready in about six months. Hello boys and girls. Lord Hawkeye yet again. This time I'm my mage. Say hello. <laughs> Brett Keen um, did a very interesting series about um, Islam and at the end of it he asked a very interesting question. How do you win the hearts of someone who wants to rip it out, so to speak? Well, I have my own thoughts about this and I thought I would share them for your listening pleasure. Do with them what you will. Okay, so you've got the problem of Islamists who basically want the whole world to dance to their tune, and that's got a lot of people quite genuinely concerned about it. Well, <clears throat> as a um, anti-statist, I um, have my own th have my own thoughts on this. First of all, it's a clear um, example of what I mean by the fundamental flaw with um, states is that. It's they're supposed to stop evil people, but the problem is evil people are naturally drawn to power and though they will so they will seek to gain control of the state, either joining it or just influencing it to their own benefit. And this is a clear example of that. Because who do they who do they protest to when they want their way? They go to the state, because the state has the power to control people and do what they want. So so this, this is one of the big reasons why I um, why I favor statelessness. I, what, so what would happen to religion in statelessness? Well, religion's ability to force its views on other people would be almost completely destroyed in a stateless society. Why? Well, first of all, they don't have a government to go to to get their way and to force everything on people. So what are they? So what are they going to do instead? Who do they protest to? Like if they can't, you can't try protesting to any individual businesses or homeowners or anyone like that, because the only response they're going to get is, "Why should we convert? Why should we um, obey Sharia law? What's in it for us?" They don't have to. So they, they've got no seat of power to try to seize control over. So they have almost no ability to try to control people. They haven't got the armament to for, to try to. Point, they can't point guns at everybody and get their way that way. It won't work. Now, some people would say, well, what, won't they just create their own community where they can um, enforce their um, terrible, views, terrible views on each other? Possibly, but here's the thing. People like to demand that the, the state enforce whatever, whatever views they like, whether it's, whether, it's, whether it's their religion, their political views, their what, or, just, or just that smoking is bad and we should forcibly stop everyone and all that sort of thing. But here's the thing. Without a state, without because what the state allows you to do is offload the cost of enforcing such ideas onto the taxpayer. But if you don't have a state, then you have to weather the cost of enforcing it themselves. This would be the, true, this would be the case with them Sharia law. If they had to actually, if they had to actually pay the cost to enforce Sharia law themselves, I think it would very quickly disincentivize like a couple of them, people who are on the edge. Once they have to actually pay for Sharia law, they probably might be disincentivized from joining in, and that would only mean the rest of them have to pay even more to weather the costs. So this would eventually spiral until pretty much all of them would just not even bother anymore. And um, now, how do you how do you make people who hate each other so much get along? Well, as always, look to history for that. The Brit the um, British and the French, for instance, absolutely hated each other's guts for uh, well over 800 years. Why did they stop fighting? Because when they they realized that if they trade with each other instead, they can live the good life and they don't have to like each other. Just don't just stop trying to kill each other, and you can get the good life. That's um, that's what free trade does. It makes people who otherwise would never get along do tra do business with each other and just not kill each other simply because it's in their own be it's in their own best interest to do so. <clears throat> I get Islam, Islam. Yeah, the Islamists might say they'd never um, they never sell their values for money, but they don't have to. 
the thing is, the thing is, ultimately they're the same as all of us. They we, they want the good life. They want what's best for them, and it's easy for them to say how important their Sharia law is to them. But once again, if they had to actually pay for it, if they had to actually see the cost of it themselves, I think it would very rapidly disincentivize the whole thing. So, so the so the bottom line. As always, the state's the cause. The state is the cause of all this. It provides a clear mechanism for evil people to force their values on others. So, this is why this is why you will never see a religion that calls for statelessness. Religions need this. Religions need states, and to to many great degrees, states need religions. If one were to die, the other would die very quickly as well. So, <clears throat> that's just my thoughts on it, and um, do tell do tell what anyone else thinks of it. Until next time, be aware and be wise.